الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف إن شاء الله Tonight we want to continue our discussion about tawakkul and I also want to start discussion about dua as two important spiritual tools. With respect to tawakkul, we said it is not just a doctrine, something just to believe. Tawakkul is a practical measure. With Tawakkul, we can change the overall balance of power into our favor. And if we truly put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He accepts our affair to be under His agency we would certainly be successful in order to make that discussion complete i will add a few more references from the quran and then inshallah i move on to the discussion about dua allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran says in chapter 8 verse 49 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض غر هؤلاء دينهم When the people who are hypocrites and those who have illness in their heart say that their faith has deceived them referring to Muslims they say these Muslims are deceived by their own faith. Then Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Whoever trusts God, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Truly God is Aziz and Hakim. Aziz, as we have said many times, is the one, is not just dear or dignified, is the one who has so, power, so much of power and strength that no one can defeat, nothing can penetrate into something which is Aziz, nothing can defeat or break something which is Aziz. So it means that by putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having Allah on your side, then because Allah cannot be defeated, you will not also be defeated. And He is also Hakim, so He has the wisdom, so He finds the best way of bringing you out of that problem. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 33, which is Surah Ahzab, verse 3, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Trust God, put your trust in Him, and He is sufficient as an agent, as someone that you delegate your affair to Him. So you don't need anything else it's not that Allah does the job half the way he is not adequate or he's not sufficient so we have to make sure only one thing and we don't need to worry about anything else and whether we are really trusting him whether we are really leaving this to him and just follow his will or we are not wholeheartedly trusting him. In the same chapter, Surah Ahzab, verse 48, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُتَعِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ وَدَّعْ أَذَاهُمْ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Don't obey the people who reject faith and the hypocrites and leave their troubling activities and what they want to do to annoy you and trust God and God is sufficient 
as someone that you trust. In Surah Talaq already we talked about this ayah. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Chapter 35 verse 3. And finally, chapter 39 verse 38. قُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ يَتَوَكَّلُ الْمُتَوَكَّلُونَ Tell God is sufficient for me. I don't need to worry about anything else after I have God. And only in God, those who want to trust should trust. So, Alhamdulillah, I think we have managed to have a reasonable, I'm not able to say we have done justice, but at least some uh, understanding of the role of tawakkul. The next thing, the next tool is dua. Dua, at the same time that it is a great ibadah, and at the same time that it is actually the core of ibadah, at dua mukhul ibadah is the core of the, and the essence of worship, it's a tool. It's an instrument. Something that you can use to meet your need, to solve your problem, to achieve what you want. I have selected some hadith from Al-Kafi. The late Sheikh Kulaini in Al-Kafi has a whole section on dua, and in that section there are different chapters. Kitab dua The first chapter is Bab Fadl dua Wal Alay is about the significance and the merit of praying to God and recommendation for that. Hadith number three. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam told a person called Muyassar, the son of Abdul Aziz. Ya Muyassar, ud'u wa la taqul inna al-amra قد فرغ منه. This message is frequently mentioned in many hadiths. Pray and don't say it's already over. It's late. Sometimes when the difficulty is there, like someone who is ill, very severely ill, we don't want to pray. We say, it's late. There is no chance that my dua is going to work. Or when the problem is, you know, big, huge, you say, no, how can my dua change it? It's finished. I am destroyed. destroyed. Imam Sadiq says to Muyassar, Udu'u wa la taqul inna al-amra qad furagha min. Do pray and don't say, this is over. This is already finished. Inna indallahi azza wa jalla manzilatan la tunalu illa bimas'alah. Truly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a position, a rank for his servants that you can only reach through dua. So by praying, you do two things. One is, you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you rise in your rank, and second, you get assistance from Allah for your problem. In the same chapter, hadith number seven, I only selected some of the hadith because our time is very limited. Zurara, you know, Zurara is very famous companion of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He quotes this hadith from his father and his father from someone. And Zur that, sorry, the son of Zurara from Zurara and Zurara from someone. Qala, qala Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. Ad-du'a'uhu wal-ibadah. 
التي قال الله عز وجل إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي إلى آخر الآية سيدخلون جهنم داخرين أدعو الله عز وجل زرارة كوت فرام إمام صادق دعاء is that worship that is referred to in the Quran in the ayah those who refuse to pray to supplicate they would enter Jahannam Dakhirin while they are humiliated if a person rejects and refuses to pray he would end up with bad situation then Imam Sadr commenting on this ayah said do pray وَلَا تَقُلْ إِنَّ الْأَمْرَ قَدْ فُرِغَ مِنْ The same message. Don't say, it's finished. It's already over. It's too late. If I had known earlier, I would have prayed. No. It's never late with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Zurara says, قَالَ Zurara, إِنَّمَا يَعْنِي Zurara says what Imam Sadiq meant because Zurara is familiar with Imam and his ideas. So he comments. He says Imam means لا يمنعك إيمانك بالقضاء والقدر أن تبالغ بالدعاء وتجتهد فيه. Your belief in قضاءَ القدر in divine decree and measure. Inshallah, I will explain later. This belief in Qadha and Qadr should not stop you. You say, okay, last Laylatul Qadr, all the affairs are decided. There is no point in making dua. If Allah wanted this to happen and it is confirmed in Laylatul Qadr, it's going to happen. If not, it's not going to happen. Why I should pray? This is wrong. Even if something is decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it is a firm qadha, a still dua can come and change it. Inshallah, we will explain this more. The next hadith is in next chapter, which is entitled Ad-Dua'u Salahul Mu'min. Dua is the weapon for believer, is a tool, is an instrument. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ad-du'a us-salahu al-mu'min wa'amudu al-deen wa nuru al-samawat wal-ard. Prayer is the weapon of the believer. What do you need for defending yourself? You need to be strong and brave and you need to have the best of weapons. A mu'min by putting his trust in God is strong and firm and also he has the best weapon which is dua. So for any problem, it's not only for militant, you know, uh, battles, any problem. Maybe you are fighting against illness, maybe you have cancer or someone near you has cancer. Maybe there's a family breakdown, maybe there is problem in business. Any problem, if you need a tool. A weapon whose power comes from God, use dua. Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam said, Ad dua um fatihun najah. Dua is the keys for success. Dua is not plural, but mafati is plural. It confirms what I said. It means. It's the name for several keys. When it comes to illness, it's medicine. When it comes to family breakdown, it brings love. When it comes to business, it brings baraka. It brings attraction of the people towards your business. So, is mafati is the keys for success. وَمَقَالِيدُ الْفَلَاهِ The keys for salvation. So, this is again confirming that dua is a tool. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى سِلَاحٍ يُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ أَعْدَائِكُمْ 
وَيُدِرُّ أَرْزَاقَكُمْ Shall I inform you about a weapon that saves you from your enemies and brings down your rezg in abundance, give you abundant rezg from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? People said, Bala, yes, please tell us what's that weapon that can defend us against enemy and at the same time can increase our rezq. قَالَ تَدْعُونَ رَبَّكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ فَإِنَّ السَّلَاحَ الْمُؤْمِنَ الدُّعَى Rasulullah said, during day and during night, pray. Because prayer is the weapon of the believer. And we have many hadiths. I say one more hadith from this chapter and then I go to the next chapter. This is from Imam Raza alayhi salam. Kana yaqulu la ashabihi. Imam Raza used to say to his companions, Alaykum bisalah al anbiya. You must use the weapon of the prophets. Faqila wa ma salah al anbiya. Those companions said, What's the weapon of the prophets? What extraordinary weapon they had? Their weapon was nothing physical, nothing worldly. Their weapon was dua. You can be as powerful as anbiya because you can use the same dua. It's just a matter of how much you put your heart in this dua. Then the next chapter is about a very important theological idea. باب أن الدعاء يرد البلاء والقضاء. دعاء is able to remove calamities and stop them if they have not come. And also is able to stop قضاء. I read for you some hadith and inshallah I will explain. For example, The hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. It is the third hadith in this chapter. Inna du'a'a yaruddu al-qadha' wa qad nazala min as-samaa wa qad ubrima ibrama. Du'a can stop qadha' even if it is decided with your dua, you can manage to stop it, even if it was firm. So before you make dua, the decision was, this is going to happen. This calamity is going to happen. But when you pray, it can change the situation. I will explain soon, inshallah. Imam Reza alayhi salam narrates from his grandfather Zainul Abedin alayhi salam. Inna du'a'a wal bala'a la yatarafaqani ila yawm al-qiyamah. Prayer and calamities come together. When there are calamities, you have an option and that is prayer. إِنَّ الدُّعَاءِ لَيَرُدُّ الْبَلَاءِ وَقَدْ أُبْرِمَ إِبْرَامًا Even if this calamity was fixed, was decided to happen, dua can come and override, can change the situation. In another hadith, Imam Zainul Abidin said, "Ad-du'a'u yadfa'u al-bala' an-nazil wa ma lam yanzil." Du'a can remove the calamity which has just approached you, or the one which has not yet come. This is the power of du'a. So, what's the explanation? We have discussed this in details in Aqai discussions, but briefly, everything to happen needs completion 
of different factors, conditions, and lack of obstacles. So we should have all the requirements plus absence of all the obstacles. For example, if you want to have a good harvest, you have to prepare the soil, you have to do proper farming, you need to have good sunshine, good rain, and you should also make sure there are no germs or no insects that would damage, there would be no fire, many barriers should be stopped, many conditions have to be fulfilled, you should work hard so that you can have very good harvest. When the overall cause, which in philosophy we call complete cause, al-illatu tam, is complete, the effect follows this. Philosophers say there is no way the effect would not follow the complete cause. لا يجوز تخلف المعلول عن علته التام. When the complete cause is there, effect definitely comes. So, Allama Tabatabai Rahmatullah Alai and some other scholars say when the cause is complete, this is the meaning of Qadha being firm. Allah's decree for this case is final. It would certainly lead to have that effect. But there is possibility of adding a new factor to this balance. So before dua, the overall balance of the factors was certainly leading to one conclusion. But with dua, you are bringing a new factor, a new element, and the conclusion can be something different. So don't be surprised how Qadha can change. This is very easy to understand if you are equipped with philosophy because that Qadha was based on certain situation. It can change if the situation by adding or removing some factors change. Maybe a person was supposed to die in an accident, but by praying, his life can be extended. By sadaqa, his life can be extended. So without prayer, without sadaqa, without that new element, certainly he was going to be killed. But with prayer or with sadaqa, the situation can change. Qadar refers to different avenues which are possible. Qadar says, if you follow this route, you reach that conclusion. If you follow this route, you reach this conclusion. If everything is the same, but you have sadaqa, that's the result. And you, if you don't have sadaqa, that's the result. So Qadar is multiple, and Qadha is the decisive result of each route, each path. So, it's very common, it's very practical, it's not just an abstract idea, that by our prayer, we can change the situation. So, it was Qadha 
Al Mubram, it was a firm and decisive decree of Allah to go to that direction, which was not pleasant. It was going to create a calamity, but with your prayer, you can bring it to this direction. This is the power of dua. So, as we have in our hadith, never think that it's too late to pray. Pray and be hopeful. Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds in your maslaha, in your interest, to grant you immediately, or it may take time, or if it is not maslaha, he will give you something much better in akhirah. Actually, there is a hadith that when people see, please listen carefully, when people see what Allah gives them on the day of judgment for prayers which were not answered, for du'as which did not receive response in dunya, when people see what Allah gives them as reward for those prayers which were not answered in dunya, they wish none of their du'as were answered in dunya. They wish all their du'as were saved for akhirah. I can pray and ask something. I will be, I, I, either I will be given the same thing sooner or later, or I will be given something much better in akhirah, something not worldly. So, du'a is salahul mu'min. Du'a is salahul anbiya. Dua is mafatihun najah, maqalidul falah, the key for success, the key for salvation, the weapon of mu'min, the weapon of prophets. So, the person who is able to pray should be happy. If you are not praying, this is the sign that something is going wrong. If you are able to pray when there is calamity, it's the sign that there is a still chance. Those who cannot pray, they have to be worried. Maybe the problem is not going to be solved. Inshallah, we continue this discussion tomorrow.